I look outside with live cam. Now, while the rain has mostly been welcomed, it did lead to a messy morning on the roads, and now we even have a school closure. Yeah, that's right. We have received word that Alamo Heights High School, yes, Alamo Heights, has canceled classes today due to power outages, and Howard Early Childhood Center has released early today. Kids went home around 1030 this morning. The district say it's all due to a water issue at the campus. Not exactly sure what the problem is, but we had gotten reports that there were some power outages, too. All right, Justin, tracking the latest here with our weathers. We got some much needed rain today. We did. Uh, the rain's coming to an end here around San Antonio now, but uh, we got some good rain earlier, and we're getting to see all of the rain gauges. You guys are doing a great job sending them in via KSAC Connect, so we know how much rain where uh, you got. Uh, and we can see that here out in Marion, just over an inch and a quarter there. Some great numbers, and that's kind of the trend that we're seeing here across Bear County and San Antonio in general, about an inch to an inch and a half. Uh, and those are really good numbers. Again, some of the biggest totals we've seen since May, uh, which is awesome. Uh, here's a big look at the radar, the kind of the wide view, and you can see we still got showers and storms south of San Antonio along that frontal boundary as it progresses off to the south. But the bulky action has moved out of uh, San Antonio with some light showers just still uh, holding on there in Atascosa County, Pleasanton over towards Forestville. This is light stuff. It's not going to amount to much. There still could be a few lightning strikes mixed in there, but all in all, this is just nice rain. Catula, Dilly, you're still seeing the rain. Crystal City, Carrizo Springs, you're getting some rain as well before this will begin to taper off. I'd give it another couple of hours there. You'll see the rain taper off for you too. And then of course we'll be tracking that drier air as it moves in coming up tomorrow and especially this weekend that'll give us some really great weather. 77 at 3 o'clock, 79 4 p.m. There could be some breaks in the clouds later today. We're not looking for a whole lot, but that should be enough to get temperatures up close to 80 degrees. And as I said, even better weather both Saturday and Sunday. Another look at that in just a couple of minutes, guys. That is a pretty forecast. Thank you so much, Justin. The halls of the house on Capitol Hill, they remain empty two days after that unprecedented vote to remove the former speaker. While many Republicans there wrangle those who caused the ouster, there's also a lot behind the scenes jockeying for a new leader. ABC's Ike Jachi explains why time is of the essence and paychecks are at stake. The country is a little more than a month away from another potential government shutdown following the historic ouster of former Speaker Kevin McCarthy. The House of Representatives remains without a speaker and its halls empty as lawmakers took the rest of the week off until Tuesday. Is there any guidance you can give folks about what happens next? I'm sorry, I can't at this point. The current power struggle within the GOP between its most far-right members and a majority of Republicans, leaving the House rudderless, unable to take up legislation or perform the most basic functions in the House until a new speaker is elected. We need to change the poisonous atmosphere in Washington. You know, we have strong disagreements, but we need to stop seeing each other as enemies. If Congress does not reach a deal to fund the government by November 17th, an estimated 3.5 million federal workers will lose pay, including 2 million active duty members of the military. Who can unite our team? I think I can do that. Representative Jim Jordan, chairman of the House Judiciary Committee and a close ally of former President Donald Trump, has announced that he's a candidate for speaker, along with current majority leader in the House, Steve Scalise. Both lawmakers say they are confident they can unite Republicans, and sources tell ABC News both of them will be more skeptical of continued support for Ukraine moving forward. If you can tell us what the goal is, how's the money being spent? How, how can we account for that? The, I think the American people are entitled to know the answer to do, those two questions before we continue to send their hard-earned money to uh, protect Ukraine's border when we have what's happening on our border. Many House Republicans have discussed punishing and in some cases even expelling some of the eight members who helped oust McCarthy. Their next opportunity to do so will be Tuesday when Republicans return for a conference meeting to try to rally behind one candidate for speaker. Ike Jachi, ABC News, Washington. New claims for unemployment benefits remained steady last week. The Department of Labor says new applications ticked down to 207,000 for the week ending on September 30th. That's just 2,000 below the prior week's revised total. Weekly jobless claims remain below historical and pre-pandemic averages, showing the continued strength of the job market. In the decade before the pandemic, weekly claims for unemployment benefits averaged 311,000. Wall Street analysts also expect the U.S. unemployment rate to fall in Friday's jobs reports. 
Some of the nation's largest cancer centers continue to deal with widespread shortages of life-saving chemotherapy drugs. That's according to a new survey. Overall, the majority of those surveyed centers, 86%, say that they have had a lack of at least one type of oncology medication. However, nearly all the centers in the survey reported being able to treat every patient who needed the drugs despite the lowered supply. They implemented a strict waste management strategy and some other approaches the White House said last month that the United States shortage of cancer drugs is due to manufacturing and supply chain issues. Coming up just a bit in sports, Wemby. Yes, Wemby tries to learn the Spurs way. We'll tell you what the French phenom is saying about his first couple of days at training camp. The happiest place on earth just got a little bit more affordable. How families can score some deep discounts on a trip to Disney. Some good news for online shoppers this holiday season. Adobe Analytics predicting record-setting discounts. The company's holiday forecast expects online holiday sales to climb almost 5% above last year. Shoppers could see up to 35% off on toys, electronics, and clothes, according to Adobe. Customers will likely spend $221 billion online between November 1st and the end of the year. Disney is offering limited time deals for your children. Between January 8th and March 10th, Disneyland in California is offering $50 park tickets for children between the ages of three and nine. So that's nearly half off the normal $98 for a regular child's ticket. These special price tickets go on sale this month on October 24th. Meanwhile, Disney World in Florida also has a discount program from March 3rd through June 30th. So here's the catch. The theme park is offering half off tickets and dining plans for children when families purchase a non-discounted four night four-day resort stay. Non-discounted four-night, four-day resort stay. Bookings for that open on November 14th. And you might be able to afford it if you had bought your Powerball <laughs> ticket last night here. Mm. Uh, that's the good news. There was a winner in this area. The bad news, no one won the big jackpot. Someone in San Antonio won the $2 million prize, though. Hey, that still gives us a chance here. Uh -huh. So according to the Texas Lottery, someone bought this ticket there at the HEB in the 9200 block of Grissom Road. The ticket holder managed to match five numbers, just not that elusive Powerball. And they also used the power play. So somebody's waking up very happy this morning. Three other $1 million tickets were also sold across Texas. But the rest of us, because we're here at work, so yep. it wasn't us, the Powerball jackpot is now out to 1.4 billion with a B dollars. The next drawing is Saturday night. All right, but we won the weather lottery though. It seems like this okay, morning. Well, yeah. That's a jackpot. <laughs> Nicely played. I like that. We did. Yeah. We did in a big way. And it's still cloudy out there. It's still kind of damp. The rain for the most part has ended, but uh, feels really good. Uh, temperatures, as far as a high temperature goes, it is 82, but that happened last night. Temperatures are now in the low 70s, so uh, we're going to be below average. That much we know for sure. 86 is the average. We're going to be below that, and we're certainly going to be below the record. 95 set back in 1893. How long will this cool weather hang around? We'll look at the seven day for you coming up. So if you won the lottery, mm, okay. would you share with your friends? Of course. Why wouldn't I? See? <laughs> wink, wink. Okay. Justin, it's Be Nice Day. Yes. It is Be Nice National Day. National Be Nice Day. To. I would share. I would. I would. And we're all sharing. We're yes. holding him to it. We, we have are. it. We now it's have like it we do on with tape. The weather. Okay. Yes. <laughs> I'll put it in writing, too. <laughs> Uh, let's look at the radar right now. We've got some showers pushing south of San Antonio around Forestville and both some light rain Pleasanton. You're seeing a little bit of light rain, but this is all moving away from the city. Uh, Kennedy along 181, still some rain to be had there as this moves west to east and along Interstate 37, Catula and Dilly. You're kind of on the tail end of things, but still a few more light showers behind you as you look north. No more rain, and so this is the last of it. We're getting that push of uh, more stable air that's starting to come into San Antonio. So you don't have to worry about rain this afternoon, but the clouds will still be there and it will still be somewhat cool.
I haven't found anyone yet that's complaining about that fact. 72 right now in cloudy north northeasterly winds at about seven miles per hour. Dew point still elevated. It's at 69. So yeah, technically the air is still somewhat humid, but uh, we're going to see those dew points come down. 75 at 2 o'clock, 77 at 3 p.m. High temperature today. If we see a little bit of sun, which I think we could, temperatures will make their way up to around 80 or so. That's it. That's it. Some 17 degrees cooler than yesterday. Uh, and then mostly cloudy as we get into tonight with temperatures holding in the 70s. What about football? We do have some Thursday night football games. Here's what you can expect. 78 at kickoff at halftime. About the same. 77. Sunset is at 715. We'll get northerly winds, partly to mostly cloudy skies and cooler conditions. That's good football weather. Big picture here. You can see where that front is. So it stretches from the Great Lakes all the way down into Texas. It's now made its way through Corpus Christi. That's kind of the leading edge right there. And it will eventually make its way down towards Brownsville, which right now, Brownsville is close to hitting 100 degrees. Uh, just to give you some perspective of the difference this front has made. And then you see the clouds kind of lingering behind the front. There's still quite a bit of cloud cover to our north. Uh, with some breaks, with some breaks. So I think, uh, yes, partly to mostly cloudy skies with the sun popping out a little bit later is entirely possible. Uh, as we look at water vapor, which gives us a good indication of moisture in the atmosphere, we're still kind of in that zone where there is some moisture, but there's some drier air seeing so just back to the north and west. And by the weekend, we get a secondary push of drier air that comes in here, and it will make a big difference. The weekend, as we've been saying, will be fairly dry. So dew points. Probably still in the 60s tomorrow. You could call that muggy. It won't feel that bad. But by Saturday and Sunday, we're seeing dew points dip down into the 40s. And that feels great. And that's also going to allow us to get those temperatures in the mornings down potentially to the low 60s and maybe even 50s. 77 Saturday, 76 Sunday. 59 is what we're forecasting for the low Sunday morning. What a nice stretch here. 85 tomorrow. It still will be a little bit warm tomorrow, but 77 as we said Saturday. You saw the forecast over the weekend. And I do need to mention it will be a little bit breezy Friday night into Saturday morning. And the next week we're back in the 80s, but back near average October temperatures, which we can deal with. We just don't want the record upper 90s like we saw yesterday, guys. Average is good. Yeah. We've learned that. Yes, we'll definitely take that. Good stuff there, Justin. Yeah. All right, the Southwest Dragons volleyball team is on fire. We stopped by the school and spoke to some of the ladies who are looking to bring a district title back to the Dragons' den. And the pride of the west side there is alive at John Jay High School. The Mustangs football team is off to their best start in years and are looking for more tonight. We'll be back with sports. Welcome back. Well, the John Jay Mustangs are off to their best start since 2003, and they show no signs of slowing down. The high-powered Mustangs are 6-0 overall and 4-0 in District 29-6A, and they're actually tied with the Harlan Hawks for first place. Jay has won five of its six games by double digits, and last week handed Sotomayor its first loss of the season. So the Jay players say they're one big family, and they are proud to represent Marbach Road. It's special, uh, like, you know, some of us, most of us have been together since we were little, you know, we grew up with that brotherhood, that family, so we know a lot about each other and, you know, we all have each other's back and it's special being out here and uh, doesn't even feel like practice, it just feels like time with your brothers, hard working, like, you know, we get competitive sometimes and it's fun. It's been great, it's amazing, I compete with my family and my brothers and on and off the field in the class too and just keeping pushing and keeping going. All right, Coach Gutierrez and his Mustangs will play the Holmes Huskies. Nice rivalry game there tonight at 7 o'clock at the Gus. All right, turning to high school volleyball. You see them behind me. The Southwest Dragons are on fire and looking to stay that way. The Dragons swept Eagle Pass win last night. 3 to nothing to improve to 30 and 4 on the season and a perfect 8-0 in District 28-5A. The Dragons are one game ahead of Harlandale and their 7-1 district mark. So we stopped by Southwest to talk with the Dragons and the ladies. They are chasing their first district title since 2009 and they feel that they have to do it as a team. Besides our record proving it, I think that this is really our best year yet. Um, the chemistry on and off the court is really good. You know, there's not really separate cliques. We all get along and, you know, we have all grade levels on our team and especially as a senior I think we all try and make 
everybody feels special. So I think it's like a really like a positive environment. Like everyone wants to be here. Like we're all excited to play all the time. We show up to a game and like we feel ready. We're on the bench. We're cheering for our teammates. Like no matter what, even if we get down, we find a way to come back always. And so I think that makes it is what's making helping us win and stuff. We have great team chemistry and I feel like even though our talent is there as well, our teamwork helps us so much. Everyone just clicks together and I feel like that helps us so much on the court. Just finish the game. Love that attitude there. Head coach Catherine Cortez is in her sixth year with the Dragons, her fifth as head coach, and she has her team playing very well. The Dragons will host Medina Valley in district play tomorrow night at 6 o'clock. All right, Spurs training camp is underway and all the rookies are trying their best to learn the Spurs way. So ahead of the regular season opener, which is just in three weeks, number one overall draft pick Victor Wembanyama probably feels like his head is spinning just a little bit at times. So it's everything is coming very, very fast. Um, I'm saying uh, what's coming fast is the all the information, the new set plays, the, the principles. There's a lot, a lot of stuff that I, I've never seen before and I, uh, that I don't know. And it's, it's hard, but it's, uh, you got to be focused when, when you're on the court because <laughs> you, you lose attention one second, you're, you're screwed for the next uh, 15 minutes. <laughs> The Spurs preseason tips off Monday night at 7 at the Oklahoma City Thunder, and they are also having their scrimmage this uh, Saturday at the AT&T Center. It's all beginning. A lot of excitement, plus something we didn't show. Victor said that Pop yelled at him for the first time yesterday. Uh, he got his first Pop lashing. <laughs> get used to it, Wimby. We've all got Very important, it. yes. <laughs> we all have, absolutely. <laughs> for sure. Uh, but I bet he has never had a crossword with the folks over at SA Live. <laughs> Probably because no. he's never Pop, been here. Pop's a big fan. Uh, well, is he? Really? Well, we'll invite Love him it. down. Yes. And we'll in, the whole team needs to come here. We'll have Spurs Day on the show. Anyway, uh, speaking of big name people, mm -hmm. Deborah Norville is in town. She stopped by the station earlier this morning. I had a chance to chat with her. Uh, How cool for you. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> yes, a little starstruck, and let me tell you, just down to earth, the nicest, nicest person in the world. All right, and of course, National Be Nice Day, yep. right? So we want to know, go ahead and scan that QR code, tell us the last nice thing someone did for you, or you did for someone else. Oh, maybe you'd like to make something nice for someone as we approach Dia de los Muertos, and the lady that can help you out with that is Gina Aramillo from Happy Chic, Happy Chick, pardon me, Beauty Designs. <laughs> yes, hi. Simple way to do these uh, flower crowns, huh? Take a close zip look. Ties. Yeah, you know zip what those ties. are? Zip ties. <laughs> Believe it or not, and you can find all different colors on Amazon. Plus, you have a deal, right? Yes, I do. Okay. If you purchase a headband from me this season, and you mention SA Live, you will get a free pair of earrings. We'll tell you all about that. All right, recognize these gentlemen. <laughs> Got a big Comic Con. I'll tell you what, it is big. It's a big Texas Comic Con coming up this weekend. And you can meet lots of celebrities and even get their autographs. Yep, and go in costume because they are going to have a costume contest. Jen's going to take us to a little wine festival there on the south side, and we are going to practice our calligraphy. All that and more on SA Live continues.